Hello, everyone. This is Mark Mullins with Fluke Networks, welcoming you, welcoming you to today's webinar. Just so you know, all of you are listening in. You've been muted, so we don't hear the dogs barking or the UPS man at the doorbell while we're working from home. And today we've got a presentation on industrial Ethernet cable testing, how, why, and what you need to do to test those cables. The presentation, as it is, it's a live presentation. As we said, we don't do any slides in these. It's just a live presentation with uh, real tools and real experts. And so we'll just get started in a, in a moment here. I just wanted to let you know that if you have questions, we'll take those mostly at the end. You can send them in through the chat window or the Q&A window. We've got a couple of people here on the line who can answer those questions for you very quickly. And then we'll take some of them and go through them at the end. So these 15 minute presentations usually end up being quite a bit longer because we got a pretty engaged audience. We get a lot of questions and, and we're really glad to be able to take the time to answer your questions and understand what we're talking about. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jim, who I think looks like he's having a little bit of trouble trying to show us what's on his screen. Say, Jim, are you there? Good morning, everyone. Buenos dias. <laughs> Buenos dias to you. Feliz Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> I was trying to put together some lovely snacks, some chips, and uh, this is what coronavirus is doing to our lime supply. Ugh. I hope lime juice isn't the cure. Anyways, on a serious note, don't worry, this is still full. We haven't opened it yet. Well, That's during the Q&A session. That's for the Q&A session, absolutely. All right, so today uh, we're going to be talking about industrial Ethernet. It's, uh, it's, I think it's going to be an interesting and kind of a deep conversation. We're going to be talking about more than just our friend, the RJ45 connector. We're also going to be talking about these M12 connectors and even adapters for these M12 connectors. But before we get into that, let's talk a bit about the industrial environment. When we talk about using Ethernet in an industrial environment, there's often a concern about noise. Oh, I have an arc welder or a 100 horsepower motor, so I have to use shielded cabling in my industrial environment. No, we're not going to talk about whether or not you need shielded cabling. <laughs> That's more than a 15 minute webinar. But what we are going to show is how the Versive DSX 8000 and the 5000, if you are going to use a shielded cable, we'll tell you about it. Now this first test that we're going to run, if you look carefully here on the left, you can see that we've set up to run a 5E channel test with unshielded cable. So let's uh, push test to start. And what I want to show is we have a shielded cable. So we are going to always check for a shield. And we can see that down across the bottom, these S's here. Uh, that stands for shield, that we are measuring continuity on the shield conductor, even though we said it was a UTP cable. So we'll always look for a shield. So suppose we did install a shield, and we want to make sure that the shield is properly installed. The standard actually tells us that the shield needs to follow the path of the cable. So let's take a look at the shielded cable here and run a quick test on it, because my engineer said use shielded cabling. And if we're using shielded cabling, we want to make sure it has continuity. One of the challenges that we've seen with shielded cabling is there may be a false path, a false conductive path between the two shield conductors. You can see my two shield connectors are just barely touching here. Now, if we were to do a shield continuity test. The way we ran with older testers, with the DTX, with the DSP, we would look for a low impedance path between the two shield conductors. I'm going to set up a new test here, and I'm going to say that I want to use shielded cable. When I select shielded cable, my shield test is going to come on here. Now, what my shield test, if I turn it off, it's not going to say anything. But if my shield test is on, and the four the shield around the four pair cable does not follow the path of the cable, 
we should fail this test. This is that NASCAR moment that Mark likes to talk about <laughs> where we look for a crash. But no, it's telling us we have a bad wire map. Now I can see there is a conductive path for the shield here, but the shield did not follow the path. It's telling us that the shield is open 16 meters, about 50 feet from the main unit, closest to the remote unit, right here on this conductor. So again, if you're going to use shielded cabling, we want to make sure that the shield is properly, has continuity, and we'll check that. Now, another concern that we have about noise, and another way that we eliminate noise, is through the use of a measurement parameter called TCL, transverse conversion loss. Transverse conversion loss, technically what we're going to do is shoot a common mode signal into the cable and look for a differential mode signal coming back to us. But really what we're looking at is how well balanced the cable is. And is the cable able to eliminate, if you will, or avoid the conversion of common mode noise into differential mode? Uh, the reason I'm showing our web page here, from our downloads and updates section, we can get our limit lines document. And here in the limit lines document, we're going to take a look at some different limits that we have available. Now, we're familiar with the 568 standard. Now, within the 568 standard, we have component standards. What should the performance be of our cable and our connectors? Uh, but it also talks about the limits for field testing. And it also has different premise standards. We're familiar with the 568 commercial building standard, but there's another version that is the TI-1005. And this applies to industrial environments. So these 1005 limits are exactly the same as the 5E limits for a commercial building. The same values for insertion loss, noise and crosstalk and return loss. Now, in the standard, they specify values for transverse conversion loss, but you are not required to test this in the field. This is a cheap plug to say, even though it's not required by the standard, you might want to test this, especially if you are in a noisy environment, to ensure that your cable is able to resist this. Now, this one is called out as E1. Where does this E come from? Well, over here, we have a chart, and I did mention the free Spanish lesson today. <laughs> and this has to do with mice tables. Mice. Oh, Jim, you, Jim your chart's not showing. Thank you very much there, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, no, no, no. That's, hey, there's, you were waiting for the crash. <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> pushed into the wall. Jim's up on the wall. <laughs> flips over three times, bursts into flame. What are we supposed to do? Go high or go low to avoid the crash? <laughs> So, mice, clasificaciones ambientales, within the 1005 standard, they talk about different requirements for mechanical, ingress, climactic, climactic, and electromagnetic interference. And they define three different levels. There's detail about what each level is of what an M1 or an M2 or an M3 situation is to survive vibration or or stress. But as we go from the E1, which would be an escritorio or an office environment, E2 would be light industrial, and E3 would be a heavy industrial environment. This specifies different parameters. Now, let's see if I can get us back to the task at hand. <laughs> when we're looking at our chart of these different industrial location tests, we have E1. E2 and E3. Now the difference between those, the next, the insertion loss, the signal strength, and the return loss are all the same. It's TCL where the values get tighter and tighter as we move up into the tighter and tighter environments. So let's go back and take a look again at our industrial cable. So we're used to using our friend the RJ45 in our data environments great connector, but not ideal if there's going to be a lot of vibration or stress on the connector. For that, the 1005 standard allows, this is an M12 decoded connector, D for data, it actually only has two pairs, but we can run 10 and 100 megabit ethernet on two pairs. 
Now we have a special adapter that we can use to test this. And you'll see that this is a round connector. So I'll see if I can't line this up. Sometimes you got to twist it around a little bit to find there's the exact lineup. And we're going to screw this down. So this has ability to resist stress. Now, please don't stress your cable tester. <laughs> this is when it's in and uh, when it's being used. Now, another thing about this, the M12 adapters, is they can be either a channel or a patch cord adapter. Now, when we look at our regular UTP cable used in an office environment, it's designed for 20 degrees C, 60 degrees Fahrenheit, dry, <laughs> not soaking wet, not bathed in oil, not subject to vibration. It just isn't as heavy duty a cable as this 600 volt industrial cable, 600 volt rated. It might be right next to a power conductor. And this is also a jacket that's going to be resistant to oil or to moisture. Curiously, on this link, we have the other M connector. This is an M12X, X for Roman numeral 10 for 10 gig, it has four pairs in it. So let us take a look at our pre-made cake here. Just plug this in real quick and let's configure another test for our tester. We're going to go to our home screen here and we're going to add a new test. I'm using a shielded cable. Now for the test limit, let me try and do this slowly. These are the last test limits I used. I'm going to jump into more and TIA limits. And just for kicks and grins, let's use category 5E. Now, this permanent link and channel testing is from the commercial building standards within 568. As we swipe up, we're going to see the test limits for 1005 the basic permanent link and channel test, and then these enhanced E1, E2, E3, corresponding to the stricter, the more stringent mice environments. I'm going to select an E2 test here. We'll save it. We'll use selected. And we'll push test to run. Now, this extended group of tests that we're running that include resistance measurements, also some common mode near end crosstalk and common mode return loss take a little longer. But if we are installing our cable in a noisy industrial environment and one of, we want to be assured that the cable is very resistant to the noise that may be induced, somebody turns on a VFD, a variable frequency drive, and we get a signal induced into our cable, we want to keep that as common mode because we can cancel out common mode. So I'm going to zip into the performance here. And we've got, again, our insertion loss, return loss, and next. Those are the same for an E1, an E2, or an E3 environment. But as we go down here, we'll see transverse conversion loss. And ELTCTL is TCL measured on the far end. And we don't 15 minute. It's a snack size webinar here. <laughs> we've got the strength of the TCL versus the frequency where it's happening, our limit line. What we can see when this passes is we are assured that our cabling is going to be able to operate in one of the toughest environments that we're going to come across. Look at that. 15 minutes. You know what that means. Time for a commercial break. I'm kidding about the commercial break. Folks, we're always looking for new topics and things that you may be interested in, in hearing from us. We have some more of these webinars coming up. We're trying to do them on a, on a weekly basis. And we'd be very interested to hear from you about what type of subjects you would be interested in. Uh, we're happy to speak to them. I think if I click on our webinar button, it's going to show me a list of the next webinars that are coming up. It's not. If I click on our webinar button, then it's going to show me some of the next webinars that we have coming up. And folks, one other thing. We work for Fluke Networks. We make test equipment. We make reliable, accurate, heavy-duty test equipment. If you are trying to identify the right test equipment for your application, perhaps an OTDR, perhaps verification of some cabling that you already have installed, please call our sales force. They'd be happy to guide you through our web page and the offerings of our cabling. Here you see some of the app, some of the tests that we have, some of the tests, some of the webinars that we have coming up. Um, we're going to be working together with Belden on this one on May 19th. 
uh, after that, a labeling presentation, and then we'll get back to some common copper cabling problems. This one will be interesting because we're not going to use Versive in this. We're going to be taking a look at some of what we call essential tools for the day-to-day, -day, like the microscanner, the cable IQ, the Intellitone. Mark, did we get any questions out of all that? You know, there, there was the only question, and I'm not even sure it was a question, but someone asked about M12 adapters for the DTX. I don't know if they were telling us they were available or if they were asking, but let's assume they were asking, can you get M12 adapters for the DTX 1800? Well, I am sorry to say that we do not offer any more adapters to the DTX. Um, it was discontinued many years ago now. Sorry, okay. yeah. Tough on us because it's a great tester and it's and it works, it works, it works like many flute testers. But yes, for the DSX, both the 5000 and the 8000, we have either the X code, which is the four conductor M12 cables, or we have the D code, which are the two conductor M12 cables. And again, I think you mean two pair, don't you? I do mean two pair. Okay, and four pair. <laughs> uh, yeah, what he said. Now, I mentioned, and we're going a little bit deep here, but one thing that's interesting about this is that we can also choose a patch cord test limit with the M12 adapters. They work. Now, Jim, you're not sharing your screen. Uh, we can only. Thank you for that. If you want to pull yeah, it. Yeah, we've gone off script here, so when it's off script, <laughs> this is what happens. That's there a we go. Point. That's better. Thank you. Yeah, so here we're seeing the patch cord test limits. I think this is a 7-meter cable, so we'll use the 7.5-meter test limit, save, and use selected. Now, if you've ever tried to run a patch cord test before with channel adapters, you'll know that here I get an error message. But again, the M12 adapters can work both as patch cord and channel adapters. Let me take a look myself. I think I see a different question coming in here. Oh, it was one that uh, we were thinking about including, but this started to get close to slideware. And that is if I could explain a little bit more about how TCL is going to be able to uh, eliminate, if you will. Now, why doesn't that one give us an option? There we go to share. How does TCL eliminate or measure the elimination of the interference? And this has to do with how does a twisted pair cable work? Perhaps we want to inject a signal that is 2 volts, or rather we want the far side to get a signal that's 2 volts. It represents uh, a symbol in our network interface card on the far side. The way that this works in twisted pair is we're going to transmit plus 1 volt on one leg of the cable and negative one volt on the other leg of the cable. And they're going to be 180 degrees out of phase. The difference between these two values is two volts. Now, very simplified example here of our motor turning on and putting a spike on the cable, a half volt spike, it actually kind of does look like that. So it's going to jump onto the cable. Now, a little bit of math, one volt plus a half volt is going to give us a volt and a half minus one volt plus a half volt, we'll end up with minus a half volt. And notice that we've been able, because this cable is well balanced, because it hasn't converted the differential mode, I'm sorry, the common mode noise into differential mode, we maintained our two volt separation, our communication continues. Now in this bottom example, the cable is not well balanced and it has converted the common mode noise to differential mode unevenly We've been unable to maintain that two volt different, that two volt separation, and this is what's probably going to cause an error frame, a thing that we're so concerned about in those noisy industrial environments. Oh, and look at that! <laughs> not a great patch cord. <laughs> it's not quite passing. We're getting a, a star pass there on return loss. And that is because, of course, it's very, very close to the limit. Well, that kind of takes the thunder out of the story. <laughs> but let's take a look. What yeah. does it mean when we get a star pass? Pass is a pass. But the standard says that if the measured value is very close to the limit line, and you can see we're very close to the limit line there, 
we are required to put an asterisk to say we may be getting into the accuracy of the instrument. This is a note that when you're writing a specification, you may want to decide that you don't want to accept any cables that pass with an asterisk. Because again, a pass is a pass. That's something that you would have to define. All right, thanks, Jim. Uh, we have another question that uh, maybe I'll answer, which is asking about, you were asking about, or you mentioned something about two conductor and four conductor when you meant two and four pair. But we did get a, a question about single pair Ethernet, and do we support single pair Ethernet? And the answer to that one is we are working on it. We are involved with the committees that are defining single pair Ethernet. The standards are still being worked on in terms of what sort of field tests would be required. But uh, when those are available, we'll have testers available as well. So you can count on that, but you'll just have to wait a little while. So that was one question. Uh, another it's a little sneak preview of one of the single pair Ethernet connectors. Yes. So as you can see, even Jim at home is working on it. I'm not quite sure what he's doing, but there you go. Another question, well, this wasn't a question, but someone said they still love and use their DSP 4300. We, we thank you for that. Uh, I, both Jim and I and uh, some of the other people on the call have been around as long as that product, but we're not going to talk about how old we are. That's enough of that conversation. Another person pointed out that yes, DSX adapters are not compatible with the DTX. So, oh, there it is, <laughs> Jim even has one. I bet it still works too. I just heard it. <laughs> Oh, yeah. battery too low to operate. <laughs> well, okay. Yeah. It's it's tough to break out a DSP four thousand when you got an eight thousand to work with. No offense to the four thousand; those yeah. things really last. Another question was, and I think this is actually this is uh, we can stop goofing around for a minute. Can I test two pair cables with four pair adapters? Yes. I think the only issue would be. It will a four will a two pair M12 cable plug into a four pair adapter? Well, let's I don't see it physically they will fit, but I think the tester, if they would, let's say the pairs right. Give us a demonstration. Yeah, let's say that uh, we're using this cable. One thing that's also interesting when we switch to the thousand five limits, we're going to get more different configurations of outlets besides just the A and B. We're going to allow these two pair options. Now, let me show you, if you don't go to a 1,005 limit to get the two pair options, how I could configure a custom limit to just measure two pairs. And to go into custom limits here, I'm going to manage and create a new limit. And I'm just going to turn off the two pairs that don't have continuity that I'm not concerned about. We'll save this. Uh, we need to name it. I'm going to name it uh, 1236. Hey, have you done this before? And we'll see that 1236 is just those two pairs. And let's go back. You selected, save, and test. When we run the test, if those other two pairs were open, we would not fail the wire map. In this case, we know that we have continuity on those four pairs. So there's a quick story of, yes, you can test a two-pair cable with a four-pair adapter, be it the M12X or our friend, the channel adapter. Is that the question as you understood it, Mark? I think that is the question as I understood it. Yes, can you show us the wire map, by the way? I'm just curious. Uh, it should show that, or will it show that all four are connected? Because we're looking to see where we're finding conductor okay. paths. Yeah. So it, it, it did find them, even though we told it not to test them. It, it's an overachiever. It does more than you um, <laughs> that sums it up. In, in fact, speaking of, of overachieving, I, I, I also might point out that, Jim, how many cable test limits do you think are in there for copper? I, there's hundreds, right? Wow. <laughs> I don't, we're not going to count them here. pages worth in our limit lines document. Yeah, that's true. We've yeah, we're not going to count them here. But, you know, I, I find it amusing that not only are there hundreds in there, more than probably anybody could even comprehend, we've got limits for every country on Earth, different industrial standards, and, and you name it. But then we also let you make your own because, you know, there's, there's just not enough cable testing limits in the world. So 
you know, as a user, you can create your own limits as well in terms of which pairs you want to test and whatnot. Yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> we're, hey, practical instrument, any place you're getting a network up and running, the cabling is always, if it is not an issue, it is suspected of being an issue. And getting a pass, getting a pass on your DSX says it's not the cabling. And that will help people on your team start looking at other causes of a failure to get your industrial right. network up and running sooner. That is correct. Right in the first place. All right. What other what other questions we have? I you know I think we are. Oh wait, are there any other questions? Oh yeah, now's your chance. If you've got a last minute question, throw it in now. And I don't see much more though. On behalf of uh, behalf of Jim and myself, Mark, and the uh, the staff that's behind the scenes here helping to answer some of the other questions that have come in, we'd like to thank you for attending our event. And we wish you a great day. We will be sending a link to the recording afterwards in a few days. So look out for that if you want to share it with your friends or want to watch it again, even though it won't be Cinco de Mayo then. We do appreciate your interest. And thanks for attending. Bye-bye. Gracias a todos. Que tengan un buen día.